Hi, welcome to Past Papers. Today we'll be looking at the November 2013 Paper 1 Mathematics exam. So let's get started with this one. Question 1. One point one says solve for x in each of the following. One point one. First question x squared minus x minus twelve. X squared minus x minus twelve equals zero. We're going to solve for x. Now we can see the highest power is a square, so this will be a trinomial. We just have to factorize this one into two neat little brackets. What times what will give you x squared? That'll be x times x. And now we look at the factors of negative 12 that when added or subtracted from each other will give us negative 1 as a result. And that'll be negative 4 plus 3. And if you're unsure, you can multiply this out to check for yourself that it works back to the same thing. Right, we see that we've got something times something equals 0. Now for that to be true, either this or that has to be 0. So therefore we say that x minus 4 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And that implies that if x minus 4 is 0, then x equals 4. Or if x plus 3 is 0, then x equals negative 3. And there you go, that's 1.1.1. Next question, 1.1.2. And this is an A and a B part to it. A, 2x squared minus 5x minus 11 equals 0. You know, this one we could try to do the same as we did in the previous question, but it looks like because of prime numbers here, it won't have nice factors. So we're going to use the quadratic equation to do this one. What is the quadratic equation? Well, it states that the, uh, the factors of x, the roots of x in the equation, roots of the equation, is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now what is a, b, and c? Well, a is the coefficient of the square term, b the coefficient of the x term, and c the coefficient of the x to the power 0 term, or just the constant. Okay, so we can substitute that in which will give us x equals negative b is negative negative 5 plus or minus square root of b squared which is negative 5 squared minus 4 times a which is 2 times c which is negative 11 all over 2 times a which is 2 times 4 2 is 4 Okay, let's work that out. x equals negative negative 5 is positive 5 plus or minus square root of negative 5 squared, 25. Negative 11 times 2 is negative 22 times negative 4 is 88. Over 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, 25 plus 88. 113. So now we have that x is equal to 5 plus square root of 113 over 4 or x is equal to 5 minus square root of 113 over 4. There you go, that's your answer. <coughs> if they want it in, in decimal notation, you can just type this in your calculator and it will give you the answer in decimals and you can round off to whatever the paper says you have to. Okay, the B part, the second part to this equation is now they've just, ah, oh, very clever, they've just added a little power to every question. 2x cubed 
minus 5x squared minus 11x equals 0. So we can see it looks very similar to the first question. The only thing is each variable now has an added power to it. So what we can do here, we see we've got a common factor of x. So let's take that out. x, and what we're left with then is the previous question. 2x squared minus 5x minus 11 equals 0. Yeah, again, we've got something times something equals 0. So either this has to be 0 or this has to be 0. So we have that x equals 0 or this has to be 0. And if this is 0, we've calculated all of this already. So it's either that one or that one. x equals 5 plus square root of 113 over 4. Or x equals 5 minus square root of 113 over 4. And there you go. Your answer. Okay, question 1.1.3. Question states negative 3 x plus 7, another bracket x minus 5, smaller than 0. Yeah, this is a linear inequality. We solve it in much the same way as we do the equation, except we don't find it where something is equal to zero, we want to find it where it's greater or smaller than zero. So let's see what happens here. Well, you see we've got a nicely factorized equation, but then we've got that negative three. So let's divide both sides by negative three, and that should help us quite a lot. Okay, so divide by negative three, then we're left on this side with x plus seven, x minus five. But now remember, in inequalities, if we divide by something or multiply with a negative, then the sign changes around. So divide by negative 3, sign changes around. Okay, now nicely factorized, but unlike equation, we cannot now say that x is equal to negative 7 and x is equal to 5. We can write that in the rough work here in the corner, which, which I think is a good idea. So x plus 7 equals 0, that implies that x equals negative 7. So that's an important number that we'll use. Or x minus 5 equals 0, which implies that x equals 5. Another important number. Now let's use those numbers. Draw a little timeline here, or number line rather. Put in your values negative 7 and 5. But now let's look at the question a bit more clearly. If you multiply this out, what do you get? You get a quadratic equation, or a parabola. What do they look like? Well, parabola x times x is x squared, so that's a positive a value, which means it's a smiley face. Okay, so we draw a little smiley face, and it has roots at 5 and negative 7, as we calculated here. Now the question asks, where is this equation, this function, this expression, where is it greater than 0? Where is it above the x-axis? And we see it's all the values from 7, from negative 7 to the left, and all the values from 5 to the right. So therefore, x has to be less than negative 7, or x has to be greater than 5. And there we go. That's our answer. So it's very useful to always draw a little picture, a little parabola. Okay, question 1.2. Has a little bit of writing to do here. Given y plus... 2 equals x and y equals x squared minus x minus 10. Solve for x and y simultaneously. Yeah, we see we've got a linear equation and a quadratic equation easiest way to do these ones is to rewrite the linear equation into something that that is useful. Okay, let's see what will be useful in this case. I would rewrite it as y equals x minus 2. Okay, because on this side we forgot also y equals x squared minus x minus 10. So obviously y and y are the same. So if the left hand sides are equal 
and the right hand sides have to be equal. So let's just do that. Let's just put the right hand sides equal to each other and solve for x. Okay, so we've got x squared minus x minus 10. We're saying that it's equal to x minus 2. And there we go. It looks like a quadratic equation again. So all we'll do is collect all the terms on one side, put it equal to 0, and find the roots. x squared minus x minus that x is minus 2x. Minus 10 plus that 2 is minus 8 equals 0. Now all we need to do is factorize that into two nice little brackets. x times x will give us that x squared. And again, now we're looking for the factors of negative 8 that when added or subtracted will give us negative 2 as a result. And that will be negative 4 and positive 2. So again we have that x minus 4 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0 which implies that x equals 4 or x equals negative 2 as easy as that done question 1.3 hey this one says simplify the following 3 to the power 2015 2015 plus 3 to the power 2013 divided by 9 to the power 1006 now it's quite clever when they put these questions into exams because calculators often struggle to work with powers as big as this they can't do the computation Okay, and when working with expon exponent form qu type questions, we want to get the bases into prime factors, the, into their prime factors. So 3 and 3 are already prime, 9 can be written as 3 squared, which is its prime factor form. So let's do that. 3 to the power of 2015, that's fine. Plus 3 already prime to the power of 2013 all over. Now 9 can be written as 3 squared and that to the power 1006. Okay, what do we want to do now? We want to factorize at the top because once we have it one term over one term we can start cancelling. Okay, the common, highest common factor on the top is 3 to the power 2013. Okay, so let's take that out. 3 to the power 2013 what are you left with here? you're left with 3 squared plus 1 at the bottom 3 squared to the power 1006 is the same as 3 to the power 2012 ok now this one we can cancel over there we're left with 3 at the top times 3 squared plus 1 Okay, 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10, times 3 is 30. And there you go, that's your answer. And that is question 1 done for the November 2013 exam. We'll do question 2 in the next video. Thank you.